In this video, I want to talk about what are symmetric and asymmetric wave functions and how they lead to a fundamental classification of all elementary particles. So let's begin. Let's take a very simple example of a system consisting of two particles. Let's suppose like a helium atom. So a helium atom contains two electrons and those electrons surround a nucleus. They might exist at some kind of a position and they might occupy some kind of a quantum states. So let's say that we have two electrons and the first electron, let's suppose occupies a position of R1 and the second electron, let's suppose occupies a position of R2. And let's also suppose that both of these two electrons occupy different quantum states. So the first electron occupies a quantum state of psi A and the second electron occupies a quantum state of psi B. Now do not get confused by the subscripts R1 and R2 and psi A and psi B that I'm using. 1 and 2 simply refers to their positions and AB here refers to the wave function solutions or their eigenstates. So the eigenstates will simply determine the energy levels in which the electrons are present and they are not dependent upon R1 and R2 here because if uh, for the first electron the eigenstate is psi a then the position will be determined the probability distribution of the electron and the probability distribution will give a range of different values of r in which the electron can be present so uh, electron of eigenstate psi a can be present at r1 it could be present at r2 it could be present at r3 it could be present in n number of locations so please don't confuse r1 and psi a and r2 and psi b here okay this determines the eigenstates which determines the energy levels and this is just a position the particle is present in now the wave function solution for this two system particle can also be written in a combined manner as let's suppose psi of r1 r2 is equal to psi a of r1 and psi b of r2 so in this case the first electron is at r1 and wave function state psi a and the second electron is at r2 and wave function state psi b so their products will determine the uh, wave function of the combined two particle system now a very important question can be asked in a situation like this electrons like most elementary particles are identical in nature identical means they cannot be distinguished from one and another that means they if you swap two electrons from their positions or their eigenstates then you will not be able to distinguish whether or not an exchange of the particles has taken place now for example if you are dealing with macroscopic particles or just like people if you have two persons harry and john now you can distinguish harry and john and if Harry and John exchange places, you would know that they have exchanged places. However, it is not the same thing with electrons. If there are two electrons at two different locations and somehow these two electrons exchange their places, you would never know that an exchange has taken place because the probability distribution for an exchange system as well as the probability distribution for these two particles in the previous system will exactly be the same and there is no physical or there is no measuring method of determining whether or not an exchange of these two electrons has taken place because electrons are fundamentally identical to each other which raises a question a very important question what is going to happen if suddenly the first electron which was at location r1 and which initially had an eigenstate psi a is now suddenly in an eigenstate psi b and the second electron which was at eigenstate psi b is now suddenly at an eigenstate of psi a so basically you can imagine it like this both these two electrons are at two distinct energy levels what if they suddenly swapped places and the electron in one of the energy levels exchanges places with the electron in another of the energy levels there is not going to be any overall change in the configuration of the energy levels and there is not going to be an overall change in the configuration of the probability distribution either so the combined wave function for an exchange of these two electrons can now be written as after exchange of particles psi r2 r1 is equal to psi a r2 psi b r1 so now the second electron which had position r2 is now having eigenstate psi a and the first electron which had position uh, r1 is now a uh, wave function state psi b so i am basically distinguishing these two by using psi r1 r2 here and by writing psi r2 r1 here so this is basically the first system 
and this is basically the wave function for the second system after an exchange of electrons has taken place. Now as I just now told you, there is no measurement which can distinguish between uh, uh, these two electrons because the probability distribution for both of these two systems is going to be exactly the same, which looks like something like this. So the probability for psi r1 r2 is basically given by this and the probability for psi r2 r1 is given by this probability distribution of both of these two situations is going to be invariant under exchange of electrons now this simple idea leads to a fundamental classification of all elementary particles how does that happen so if you look at this the probability distribution for electron 1 2 and electron 2 1 is exactly the same so this leads to psi of r1 comma r2 is equal to plus minus psi of r2 comma r1 so as you can see under the exchange of particles there is a plus minus sign involved here and these two situations can be defined as symmetric and asymmetric cases so let's suppose we find first define this as symmetric case so in the symmetric case psi r1 r2 is equal to plus of psi r2 r1 and in the asymmetric case anti-symmetric case psi of r1 r2 is equal to minus psi of r2 r1 now all kinds of elementary particles under exchange will show any one of these two behaviors those particles which under exchange their wave functions do not undergo any change in sign are known as bosons and those particles which when an exchange takes place their wave function undergoes a change in sign are known as fermions now both these two wave function solutions are possible if you are making a measurement on a system consisting of two particles and both these two particles underwent some kind of an exchange you would not know from your measurement that they went underwent some kind of a change so therefore both of these wave function solutions are possible wave function solutions and therefore a general solution can be written as a linear combination of both of these so let's see what the general solution looks like So here is a general solution for the linear combination of both these two possible wave function solutions. So for the, those cases in which the wave function solution do not undergo any kind of a change has a positive sum here and those cases where the wave function solutions undergo a change when exchange of particles takes place has a negative sign here. Do not worry about the 1 by root 2 term that is just a normalization constant. Now as I just now said those cases in which there's a plus sign involved, these are going to constitute the boson particles and those systems in which there, there's a negative sign involved, these will constitute the fermion particles. Now, we can know more about these particles by looking at a very specific case. Let's imagine for a second that both these two electrons or both these two particles, we might be dealing with other particles like protons, neutrons or photons, anything else. Let's imagine that these two particles are existing in the same quantum state. What is going to happen then? So if both the particles, let's suppose the first electron and the second electron are existing in the same quantum state, let's suppose psi a. Now here we have taken a very special case in which both the two electrons are existing in the same quantum state. If they exist in the same quantum state then what is going to be the combined wave function psi a psi r1 r2 here this is the asymmetric case asymmetric psi r1 r2 is equal to psi a of r1 and psi a of r2. Now what is going to be the wave function solution under exchange in that case you will get psi of r2 r1 is equal to psi a of r2 and psi a of r1 now if these are the two possible wave function solutions for uh, the first system and under exchange for two electrons who are in the same quantum state then what is going to happen to the symmetric wave function and the asymmetric wave function you will realize that for the symmetric wave function 
since there is a summation involved, since psi r1 r2 and psi r2 r1 are exactly the same as you see here, because this is the same quantum state psi a and this is the same quantum state psi a here, and here you have psi r2 and psi r1. So their sum would give you some kind of a some value here. It will not vanish. Okay, but if you look at the asymmetric wave function, if you see here, asymmetric wave function simply would vanish because psi r1 r2 is exactly equal to psi r2 r1 because we are dealing with the same wave function states. So because there is a negative sign involved, this will become zero. Now it is not possible for the wave function of any given system to go to zero because this would simply mean that these two particles do not exist at all. Now it's not possible if the particles are existing somewhere, their wave function has to have some finite value otherwise the probability distribution will go to zero because the electrons are existing somewhere in the universe. So because the wave function of the anti-symmetric case goes to zero, it can only mean one thing that this situation is not possible. That means both these two particles cannot exist in the same given quantum state. So this leads to a very important principle which is known as the Pauli's exclusion principle. So this case leads to what is known as the Pauli's exclusion principle. If you might have heard of this, which basically states that for a certain class of particles called fermions, which basically follow the anti-symmetric wave function condition, it is not possible for them to exist in the same quantum state in a given system. However, for the case of bosons, it is possible because for the case of bosons, the symmetric wave function state leads to some value, which means what? If there is some potential, let's suppose, uh, and there are some energy levels, and this potential is filled with bosons, then bosons could technically occupy uh, one energy state and there can be a large number of bosons in that energy state but for anti-symmetric case if there is some potential and there are energy levels here then these uh, particles which I said are fermions can only uh, occupy the energy level two at a time max and two because they might have opposite spins same spin particles cannot exist in the same quantum state so this idea of anti-symmetric case leads to Pauli's exclusion principle. So this simple idea that under exchange the wave functions might undergo change in sign or not fundamentally classifies all uh, elementary particles into bosons and fermions into particles which do not follow the exclusion principle and to, to the particles which do follow the exclusion principle. So to summarize here I have written the distinctions between these two classifications of particles. So the bosons are basically those that have symmetric wave functions under exchange of particles and fermions have anti-symmetric wave functions under exchange of particles and because of this as I just now showed you the bosons do not follow the exclusion principle they can occupy an energy level as with as many particles as possible and fermions do follow the exclusion principles they follow the Bose-Einstein uh, statistics as opposed to fermions who follow the Fermi-Dirac statistics also it is found that there is also a distinction in the spins of these particles the boson particles have sp spins which are either zero or integral spins and fermion particles have half integral spins and few examples of bosons will be let's suppose photons and for fermions there will be electrons protons and neutrons that's it for today's discussion thank you very much